certainly, I guess uh, it seems like a completely new defense from the last time we talked to you. And, and this question may be a week to week thing, but how much does your plan, maybe your approach change with so many new pieces, both rushing the passer and at corner? Yeah, I think um, as this thing goes and we get these guys back, get them in here, get working. Um, I think ultimately we got to see what they do well, what they understand, what they can execute, what their skill sets are. Um, and it's across the board. I mean, from up front, the four guys rushing to the guys we could be bringing from the second level, from the third level. And then obviously the coverage piece, um, who's able to play a man coverage, who's good in zone, the different skill sets that these guys have and figuring out what they do well and putting all the pieces together as a unit to maximize all the guys' abilities that are out there. Uh, Teresa? So, Shane, now that you've got the defensive coordinator title, uh, how much of your job has changed from last year? Uh, are you, you know, is it a little easier to just focus on the entire defense at this point? Yeah, it's been good. Um, I mean, it's changed. It's definitely changed. Just the, uh, the position, the title, the stuff that comes with it, um, having control over the whole unit, um, my perspective on everything making sure we're all on the same page, seeing things the same way, and be, ultimately being the final voice, right? Um, so it has changed in that regard. It's been great. The players have been great. Um, we're doing a lot of new things, a lot of different things, um, just in how we go about our day, how we go about our business, and then obviously schematically some things change as we go with all the new personnel and everything else. So uh, it's been good up to this point. Uh, yeah, coach, looking at you at practice, uh, you're going from group to group. That's something that you didn't get to do before. How much does that allow you to really, you know, sprinkle your, your flavor on on this overall defense? Yeah, it helps a bunch. I mean, I, I think first and foremost, it helps um, just with the relationship with all the players across the board, getting there, seeing them work, seeing how they work. Being able to, we always talk about take stuff from the meeting room to individual to group to team and seeing all those different techniques we talk about that we show on film and being able to talk through that stuff with them on the field as well. Uh, honestly, if you can correct things in the moment, it's always better than doing it after the fact. Um, but I think it's been it's been great for me to do just in terms of building these relationships with these guys and kind of continue forward to taking that leadership role on the whole unit. Uh, Terry? Shane, you added Janoris Jenkins, drafted Caleb Farley to kind of revamp the secondary. With Given their skill sets, how much is uh, being able to play more press man coverage going to be a priority in yeah, I, I, I think we got uh, <clears throat> got some good play. Obviously, Janoris has done it a long time. Uh, we still got to wait and see with Caleb. Um, he's obviously not doing anything right now for us, so we'll kind of wait and see. But, I mean, Janoris has played a, lot of t a long time. He's had a lot of success in this league. So I think as we get him here, we get our hands on him. Again, like, it's always evolving with what we see these guys can do, what they, what they can't do but finding ways to be more aggressive in coverage, to challenge receivers more. Um, I think that's all part of it as we progress on, whether it's those two or, or any of these other DBs, linebackers that are playing in coverage. Uh, John Glennon. Hey, Shane. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, obviously a lot of changes in terms of whether it's rookies or free agents added and, and you know, some people gone too. Um, if there's been a consistent theme to the additions that you guys have made on defense, you know, whether it's free agent or, or rookies, you know, is, is there a thread or a theme that can be drawn from, from all these players, something that you'd like to see in this defense that maybe wasn't there as much last year? Yeah. I, I think the one thing that has stood out to me with all these guys, um, they've all been engaged. I think they all love ball. Um, they've been bought into what we're doing. They ask good questions. They're learning whether they're here or not. They're taking the time um, to learn and understand what we're doing uh, defensively and positionally. Um, 
I've been pleased with all of them up to this point. I do. I think they're really engaged. I think they're excited about the opportunity here as we all are, even myself, the coaches and the returning guys. Um, we're looking forward to the opportunity and we're excited to have some new pieces and we're kind of starting from square one all over again, trying to rebuild this thing with the new guys that we got. Um, but I've been encouraged by all of them. Uh, Buck? Hey Shane, given some of the struggles that the defense had, it was it was you know I know you guys don't pay attention to outside noise, but it was received not necessarily well that you had gotten the promotion as defensive coordinator. But what what does it kind of say about the the faith that Mike Vrabel has in you to be able to promote you and understand you know all of the mitigating circumstances that went into the struggles last season and and still have the faith in you to be able to uh, excel excel at this level? Yeah, I mean I I think. Uh... I think he's he's kind of coached me in this deal. He's brought me up through this profession in some regard. Um, I think just looking back at the position groups when I had them, OLB-wise, some of the things we've done in the past here, um, even last year, some of the good, some of the bad, there was stuff. Obviously, we got to get corrected. But, um, I mean, I appreciate his confidence in me again. Just like all these players we talk about every day, like we work every single day to prove ourselves and to make this team better. Like regardless of the individual, whoever it is, like we're all in this together to do whatever we, we see fit or whatever's needed to find ways to win games in whatever fashion we got to do. We got to play better defensively. We do. I'm excited. I'm encouraged about where this thing's going right now. Um, but again, I'm just just like everybody else, man. I'm I'm putting in the work day in and day out, trying to do everything I can to help this team win. Thanks, uh, Paul. Shane, a uh, lot of snaps lost with Daquan Jones uh, at, at nose. I'm wondering what you think about where Tier Tart is and uh, the opportunity for he and and other guys, known and unknown, at this stage. Yeah, I mean, those guys, they're getting a bunch of reps right now. They're out there. They're working. They're showing improvement day in and day out. Um, I mean, I've been pleased with them up to this point, Paul. I think it's it's been encouraging with those guys. Um, obviously, once Shane and Camp rolls around really up front, that's when you get the true, true uh, I guess, litmus test on those guys just in terms of where they're at when we put pads on and we start going and it's play it play in and play out and ultimately man it's the it's the consistency like that's that's what you lose when you lose a bet like the consistency of doing it the guys that have done a long time and it's up to us as coaches and them as players to grow up to become from year one to year two there should be incremental growth um and just being able to find that consistency in their game and they're putting the work in right now. It's getting there, but we'll have to see come training camp where that thing goes with that group. Uh, Gentry? Yeah, Shane, you, you've mentioned, you know, putting in a lot of new things, a lot of different things. You've talked about, you know, starting from scratch and a rebuild. As, as you look back at last season, what personally, personally, what lessons did you take from that and, and what, are the, the new different things you think that, that will, will help you guys uh, play better this year on defensively? Yeah, I think last year, just the, the week in and week out, the understanding the personnel, our personnel, how things are changing throughout the year. Um, some of that stuff, working with our coaching staff, working with these players, um, and I think diving in to truly who these guys are, what they do well, what they don't do well and finding ways to put them in positions to succeed. Like ultimately we want all these players to find success within the system as we play good defensively as a unit. Um, and we're trying new things. Like a lot of, there's a lot of the same scheme stuff. Don't get me wrong, but like, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, right? Like you can do things a lot of different ways, just trying to find what fits with these players, what they most relate to that's the beauty of bringing guys in too from other teams like how they've done things obviously with Schwartz coming here um I mean everybody kind of has their schemes what they do their systems but everybody does them a little bit differently so just trying to find that niche with what works with our guys ultimately uh 
Uh, Derek, Stella. Yeah, Shane, it seems like this has been an issue that probably predates you by a long stretch, but where, why is there faith this year that the defense will finally figure out and have a pass rush? When you guys add Bud Dupree, that's a big step, but how much, like, where is the faith coming from that the pass rush will be formidable this year? Yeah, I mean, I, I got confidence in these guys as it, as it goes, I think, in training camp. Like, it's hard right now, man, like, just – we're not really doing a whole lot with these OTAs. We're working the individual, we're working techniques, but truly lining up and rushing against the O-line, like it's a non-contact camp right now. So you, we're not really going to get a good gauge for what that's going to become. Um, but I think we're excited about what what's Bud what Bud has done, what Danico has done, where Jeff's at, what Harold has done at times for us. Um, and then we obviously got to develop a few more guys here to be able to go in there and execute and find ways to affect the quarterback. Um, but I think that's something built over time. I hope all these guys have tremendous confidence in their selves and being able to get to the quarterback. Um, I think that's a vital step to being a good player is being able to play with confidence and know who you are and that you're going to get your job done and excel at your job. Um, so I hope all of them individually have confidence. I can't speak for anybody outside of this building but I got confidence in them. I do. I can't wait until we get to the fall and we get to kind of put this thing together and see what it looks like. Uh, John Burton. Hey, Stan, you mentioned some of the uh, young guys in your secondary. What kind of an advantage is it having a guy like Jack Rabbit, who's uh, been there, done that kind of guy, but not only give you production on game days, but also work, work with some of these younger guys? Yeah, man, I think that's huge. Um, Obviously, the learn guy, the young guys, there's going to be a learning curve. There is. It's just the nature of the beast. It's a different game. Um, but catching those one or two tips here and there, day in and day out, that might – something might click a little bit quicker for them than it would otherwise if they didn't have that advice or somebody that, that has lived through the fire and can kind of pass that stuff along. And I think that goes for any position group, not just – not just the DB room, which obviously we got a couple of young guys in there. Um, but anytime those veterans, man, who have kind of lived through it, they can share their experiences and hopefully it just gets those rookies up to speed a little bit quicker than otherwise. A word we heard a lot from players last year was communication. And, and they talked a lot about needing to get on the same page what all have you done and, and what all is being done to make sure that, that those problems don't pop back up in 2021, especially with the volume of new starters that you're going to have? Yeah, I think uh, we work on that constantly. I think that's a daily thing with any defense, with any offense, is making sure you got all 11 on the same page. It's been a point of emphasis for us throughout this offseason. Um, I think building these relationships with these guys – making sure it goes beyond just I'm the first string guy, I'm the second string guy, I'm the third string guy. Like, who knows who's going to be out there? But I think the guys understanding um, each other, building relationships with each other, building trust with one another, and then ultimately making sure they understand, hey, I should be expecting this call in this play or this call in that play. Like, there's a million things that can be communicated on any given snap. But it's kind of narrowing that focus, maybe becoming more conceptual in our understanding. Hey, I'm doing this because this guy's doing this, right? So everybody's a little bit more coordinated, more on the same page. And it's been a big emphasis for us this offseason, making sure we're communicating, making sure these guys see things through the same set of eyes, see things the same way, um, and talking through stuff as it comes up. Okay, Retro. Shane, when, when it gets to game weeks uh, in the fall, will your days be any different than they were last fall? I mean, is there any significant change in your daily routine or, or your duties with, with the title? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, just obviously not having the outside backers. We had Matt Edwards helped out there last year a little bit. Um, but not having – not having that and truly focusing on defense, almost like Teron said, being able to walk around, get in some other meetings, uh, do some of that stuff. 
I think it, it will be a change. It will be an adjustment uh, come fall. Ben Arthur. Hey, Shane, you've, you've obviously talked about the, the struggles, um, some of the struggles you guys had defensively last year, but you guys were a top eight team in takeaways. Is that something that you guys look, you know, at as, as being kind of something to, to build upon and being a foundation to, uh, to kind of this, um, you know, transformation, so to speak, that you guys hope to show signs of in 2021? Absolutely. I think that's a uh, that's a foundation piece for us. We talk about it every day. We emphasize it every day. I tell the guys, you, you get what you emphasize. Like, we're going to keep stressing it. We're going to show the missed opportunities. We're going to show the good ones. Um, but really, that was a big factor for us last year, finding ways to turn the ball over, get the ball back to our offense. Uh, it's got to continue. Like, we can't we can't let that waver. Uh, with any of the other stuff, is still going to be a core core belief that we have is finding ways to turn the ball over. Uh, Corey Curtis. Hey, Coach. Um, just a question. You brought up, um, you know, the addition of Jim Schwartz. He and Mike are obviously a couple of real alpha personalities. H how difficult is it or challenging, I should say, to put your stamp on this defense with two personalities like that also in the mix? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I think we all work well together. It's been good. Um, I mean, the beauty, of, obviously, Mike's done it. Uh, Schwartz has done it at a high level for a long time and has been successful. Hazlitt has done it for a long time. Um, like, it's it's great to be able to bounce ideas off each other. Uh, kind of like I mentioned earlier, just finding or talking through figuring out different ways to do things that doesn't totally wholesale everything we're doing, but Hey, it might be better if this player does it this way, or we're looking at it this way based on our personnel. Like there's, there's a lot of ways in a cat, like I said, and just the different perspective. I think also like obviously with Braves and Schwartz and even has like those guys have a little bit of the offensive perspective, right? Cause they were head coaches. They've sat in those meetings. They've heard those things. Um, so gaining that perspective has been huge. Um, just kind of piecing this thing together and figuring out how we can attack offenses and kind of what they're looking for.